let us pray. Father, we seek now to reflect upon a portion of your holy word. We pray that you will open our understanding, that you will guide our thoughts. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Citizens of heaven, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Every good citizen makes his country's honor his own and cherishes it not only as precious, but as sacred. He is willing to risk his life in his defense and is conscious that he gains protection while he gives it. So says Andrew Jackson, the seventh President of the United States of America. Citizenship of a country is extraordinary. And this is also true for persons who are citizens of this nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Additionally, national citizenship provides us with the opportunity and the rights of being able to vote in general elections, owning a national passport, obtaining a government civil service job, and being elected to the House of Assembly. Furthermore, some countries now use the Citizen by Investment Program to provide wealthy foreign families with the privilege of acquiring an alternative citizenship, which in turn gives them the right to travel freely and to settle in another country. Extensively, during Judas's earthly ministry, he taught and explained about the kingdom of God, or as Matthew's gospel puts it, the kingdom of heaven. He invited his listeners to be a part of this kingdom of God. I suggest that that which Jesus taught certainly supports the Apostle Paul, who in contrasting the enemies of God and the way that they live their lives and the way that they behave, he, Paul, indicated in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven. And today, as you and I meet here in this time of worship, as a community of believers, I also indicate to you that our citizenship is in heaven. It is crucial that we understand that neither Jesus nor Paul was speaking of us relocating and living in an actual place somewhere else across the world. Rather, both of them were calling persons to accept and to live under the rule and the authority of God and as children of God, to commit to our Father, meaning our Father, with determination to obey. In other words, as believers, even while we reside on earth in our national spaces, we are citizens of heaven and we expect to live in accordance with God's regulations, propelled by love and mercy, and thereby commit to transformative work 
of the Holy Spirit. We have to want it. And we have to make up our minds that no matter what happens, we will live committedly for the Lord Jesus Christ. Interestingly, the Greek word that is translated as citizenship is polytema. And this reflects the commonwealth or the state which individuals belong. It is regarded that the term would have been significant to those who lived in the Philippian space because they were proud citizens of a distant country called Rome because they were part of the colonies of Rome. In that regard, they would have even spoken the Latin language. They would have dressed like Romans. They would have been administered to by the Roman government and even engaged in Roman morality. Like us in this space, they were expected to be good citizens doing nothing to negatively affect the nation. Importantly, in the kingdom of God, or citizens of heaven, there are vital rights, such as us being saved and reconciled to God as sons and daughters, such as being sanctified and transformed by the Holy Spirit. And this is very important because when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not just left in our sins. The work continues by God to change us, to transform us, to sanctify us. We have the right to constant companionship with Jesus. And no matter whether you are alone or not, you can regard Jesus as there with you, closer than any friend, closer than any brother or sister. And you're able to bring everything to God in prayer. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a race that we have as believers, as Christians, as citizens of heaven. And certainly, the hope of the resurrection and a heavenly home. Yes, we have these. With the chief one being sharing in the victory of Jesus Christ. And in this regard, we expect and eagerly await him as Savior and Lord so that we can live with him forever in heaven. These are real situations for us. This is not just our imagination. These are real for us, and we are able to see the dynamics of them working out in our lives. Even as we pray to God for healing, we believe and know that our God will work according to his will and purpose in our lives. We need to be aware that there are those who will advise us to live for the moment. Don't bother about tomorrow. Just live your life, man. Enjoy life. Eat, drink, and be merry. Do whatever you feel like doing today. And Paul regarded such persons as enemies of the cross. And he urges the Philippians and us that we ought to live as Christ's people so that one day we will be like Christ, awaiting all the glory of God's kingdom. Vitally though, in addition to the eventual second coming of Jesus, 
We need to bear in mind that eternal life starts right now. Eternal life is not a gift that we get only after we are dead and our bodies are placed in the grave or only at the time of the resurrection of the body. Even now, as we accept the Lord, eternal life starts. Listen to Jesus himself speaking as he prayed for his disciples and as recorded by John chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is Jesus himself advising us what eternal life really is. And so as you and I come to know more of the Lord and live more in the Lord, you can see how we are able to live abundant life even fuller and fuller each day. It means that as citizens of heaven join our earthly life's journey, we should not simply be tied to the material things. We should not simply be tied to our education, our career, or the home, our land, or human relationships, as good as those things are. And if the Lord has blessed us with them, we need to appreciate and use them properly. We must seek, however, after that which gives ultimate life fulfillment, thereby placing education, career, home, human relationships in the proper perspective. Remember that Jesus taught the essential principles of life in the Sermon on the Mount, and he gave this fundamental advice in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Give your heart to me first. Everything else will fall into place. God doesn't want us not to be blessed with material things, but he wants us to so put him first that everything else will take its proper ranking. Here, Jesus Christ highlighted the starting position of us giving our lives to Jesus and knowing God, the true God. And it pointed to the life-changing, life-fulfilling relationship with God through him. It means, therefore, that being a citizen of heaven ought to be our life's goal, and we must maintain it in the crucial top spot throughout our lives. Let me tell you, just as we are proud to be associated with this country of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we ought to be proud or even more so to be part of the community of faith. We ought to be able to speak with absolute assurance and joy that yes, I am a citizen of heaven. I am a child of the king. And that ought to be our expression with confidence. This heavenly citizenship is the zenith of a life surrendered to the rule of God in every respect. At the city of heaven, we must break sinful habits and develop Christian character 
with the Holy Spirit enabling us. We must stay focused on Jesus daily and grow in the means of grace. Folks, don't let us jump out of Jesus' relationship and then jump back in at some convenient time and then we jump back out again and then jump back in. Let us remain in. He's too sweet, man. This is too important for us to go and come. Let us remain in the Lord, grounded as citizens in our relationship with each other, fellow believers, and even members in the wider community. We must exhibit love for others and gain the encouragement to keep pressing on. We need others to encourage us. We're not journeying through life alone, and we don't have to try to do that. Be encouraged even by others. I'm sure that this morning, even as we prayed for the persons who we prayed for, they would have been encouraged that the whole church was a part of it. For we need each other. We are not an island unto ourselves. Undoubtedly, we must trust in God. That is what he was calling Abraham to do. Yes, we may not be able to explain how God is working. Yes, it might seem very confusing to us when we think that God should work in a particular way and he works differently. But God says to Abraham, as he says to us today, trust me. Even if I take you to the brink, still trust me. And you see what happened when Abraham was taking his son Isaac to sacrifice him. God took him to the very brink of lifting the knife to slay his son. And then God stopped him and offered an animal. Yes, trust God. He's faithful. He's not going to do anything to cause us harm. For God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And as we trust him, we pray that he will produce from within us the heavenly base of peace and joy. Folks, no matter what life throws at you, God wants us to be peaceful people. God wants us to be joyful people because our joy is in the Lord and not simply the events as they unfold before us. C.S. Lewis says, aim at heaven and you will get earth. Aim at earth and you might get neither heaven nor earth. Paul therefore shared with us his strategy of each day standing firm in the Lord. For indeed, there are no shortcuts to Christian maturity. And I want to tell the young believers that it doesn't happen overnight that you are mature. Work out your salvation. And so every day we have to press on. Every day we have to have the mindset, Lord, I am going to serve you today. We can't give up. Keep pressing on. And the songwriter puts it beautifully for us. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Canaan's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. So today, my beloved, we are called to recognize that we are citizens of heaven. And if you have already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you are in close communion with him, I pray that you will continue living as a citizen of heaven and let absolutely nothing or no one 
make you lose that relationship. If you have backslidden, I call upon you today, no matter where you are, no matter where you're hearing me from, to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, to fully say, yes, Lord, I accept you fully into my life, and I want to live for you fully. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you're not part of this citizenship, right now can be your special moment. Right where you are, God in love is wishing out to embrace you in his arms of grace. Simply say yes. Simply open your life and ask Jesus to come in. Simply surrender and tell him to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you, to wash your life clean, and come in and dwell through the Holy Spirit. I pray today that we will experience the Lord in a fresh way, individually and collectively, and in faith, we'll recognize that indeed we are citizens of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.